The Pope and Young Club wants to welcome you as we rally together to ensure our bow hunting opportunities for today and tomorrow. You've come to the podcast that believes in preserving, protecting, and promoting the passion for bow hunting. Join us as we strive to be the voice of today's bow hunter. This is the Pope and Young Podcast. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Pope and Young Podcast. Jason Roundsville here, joined as always by my co-host Dylan Ray. And we have with us one of our upcoming speakers in Reno. We have Easton Holder. Easton, welcome. How you doing, guys? I'm happy to be doing, here. Doing great. Thanks for jumping on with this. Um, super excited to have you on today. Hear a little bit about you. And uh, and also, man, Reno is ramping up. Unbelievable. We just went through some of the some of the fine details today and the hunt list. And holy smokes, man, we're I mean, we've been excited about it for a year, but all of a sudden it's like, man, it's coming up in just a couple of weeks. Yeah, it's coming so, quick. Will this be your first Pope and Young convention or have you been before? No, this will be my first one. I'm pretty sure everybody in my family's gone except for me. Okay. Well, that's good. Now, uh, now one year, one year, your mom, I believe, spoke right at a at a luncheon. Yeah, yeah. I think it was the. I think it was in Nebraska. I, I, if I'm okay. right, but I yeah, um, because it was definitely a lot closer than Reno. So, yeah, I just remember the moment that we mentioned um, having raised hunting or the holders. Um, Somebody said, yeah, they've done it before and they, they killed it. So, uh, yeah, we're definitely looking forward to having you out, man. So it sounds like I got some big shoes to fill. No, no. Hey, listen, dude, I got news for you. Though. <laughs> your, your brother, you got a better brother than I got. I'll trade you brothers. Cause when I asked your Why? brother, listen, <laughs> you might not know this. I said, Hey, Warren, uh, we'd love to have you speak. And he said, well, I would love to. He said, but my brother is way better than me, um, at doing that. So, I would highly recommend him. And I'm like, he did not tell wow. me that. Yeah. My brother would never yeah. do that. My brother would be like, yeah, I'm all there, dude. My brother. Oh, would see, never. Yeah. <laughs> see, my brother would total. My brother would absolutely do that. He'd be like, Oh, you need the dishes done. My brother is way better. Way better at doing oh, yeah. <laughs> Way better. Yep. Yeah. He did though, man. I yeah. uh, reached out and, and he said, man, as much as I'd love to, uh, cause he's an official measure for us. Uh, he said, as much as I'd love yeah. to, man, uh, my brother will kill it at that. So I was like, well, okay. So you got a good brother, man. Well, I guess now everybody's he's talking me up now. So now I got even more shoes to fill. <laughs> yeah. So man, you have well, a the, brother. Who's I'm really official, excited. Yeah. Official measure. Is that, is that helpful? I'm actually yes, searching for a new measure. Mine is super tight. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're looking for somebody that's willing to take a dollar or two. <laughs> not take a dollar just like man do you have to round down on everything I, like, just... that war my dad gets on warrants he uh killed a buck oh it was probably four or five years ago biggest deer he's ever killed in his entire life went 179 and seven eighths and he's oh. like are you serious you can't just give me the eighth one eighth <laughs> yeah, he, I, the deer he went like one i think it was 169 is a straight eight wow Oh, yeah, it was crazy. Not, was a really big deer. But no, I remember. Uh, it's I remember, nice having. Go ahead. Uh, it's nice having Warren around the house because I sit there and when he starts scoring, the way we used to score, we scored them even smaller. So we went back and rescored a bunch of them, and now I've learned all the different tricks and stuff. And I learn every time we do some different kind of deer, somebody brings them something. I'm always the one taping stuff and helping. So I've kind of got to have a secondhand class from him. Yeah. It's it always amazes me how like you say, oh, it's 179 and seven eighths. You can't find an eighth. Man, those guys aren't looking for another. They are looking for yeah. whatever it is, whether it's you know 121 or 221. It's it's mm -hmm. exactly what they say it is. And it's um I've I've been involved, I've been a hunter all my life. And so I've seen the tailgate measuring sessions and Ooh. you know oh that's a that's 200 inch buck and you're like yeah 150 is a great buck <laughs> so, <laughs> but it's it's different and if if you've never been around i've had the privilege to be around it and holy smokes those guys are something else it's no i uh pretty impressive not, especially when you 
not too long ago, you Go guys ahead, put out a reel and uh, it was like, you know, guess the score or whatever. And there was a couple comments of people like, well, yeah, we're guessing the Hunter score. It's going to be way off. And I'm like, I wanted so badly to comment and be like, actually, he's a Pope and Young measure. Like, you're, he's not going to get it wrong. It's, it'll be whatever he says yeah. it is. Like, but I didn't. I was nice. But yeah, there were a lot of people saying, like, well, yeah, you're going to score it way higher than it is because you're a buck. And I'm like, well, Warren's a, a Pope and Young measure. So I doubt he's oh, no. stretching the tape for anybody. Yeah. No, they don't do it. No, no. he does not at all. But that's yeah, a good see- thing. That's what we should do, Dylan. That's what we should do. Because we have, uh, in Reno, we have the world championship field judging going on in Reno, where you can jump behind a, some glass and literally try your hand against the, some of the best in the world at field judging animals. And, uh, Dylan, that's what we should do, is we should have the, like, kind of a guess the score. You should say, hey, what guess the score – as a hunter and then guess the official measurement and you have to pick both numbers. So you look at it and you say, okay, I'm going to guess <laughs> that buck at 185 for, you know, the hunter number. And then the official measurement would be 147 and two eights. And then they have to see how close they get to both. Yeah. I didn't know you guys did a competition like that. Is that, is that like just white tails or is it a bunch of species or what is it's, it? It's uh, depends on what those guys show up with that day. It's yeah. Okay. Whitetails will be on the list, but you have to be able to field judge potentially a muskox. Oh or, well, yeah. I would lose uh, that real quick. Yeah, I know. So um, last, I, the last event, there was a, a typical whitetail, a non-typical whitetail, no, a non-typical mule deer, uh, an elk, um, a pronghorn and a pronghorn. pronghorn. Yep. And there was five. What was the last one? Were there two elk? Was one vel was one velvet and one hardhorn, maybe? I don't remember. Anyways, yeah, something like that. But yeah. five there's five animals that you judge. Yeah. I I got really close on the gross scores, but on some of them. That the one white tail threw me off. I was off like a bunch on that one, but Otherwise, the, the gross scores, I was okay on. But the actual score, I'm not a contender for the world championships. <laughs> <laughs> that That is where I would – the net part was I can get pretty close, like especially whitetails. We can get hopefully within a couple inches or an inch or two. But net, oh, no. I'm yeah. getting close to that. <laughs> yeah. that's they, they had one there that – you know, because a, a lot of people, they – a lot of people think, Hey, I'm within a couple inches on a, on a buck. And they had one that, that folks were like 20 some inches off on. Cause it was just had a little bit of a weird, you know, one of those nuances that whitetails have that was scored a different way. And, and you it, know, uh, some people got yeah. it. Some people didn't. I'm anxious to hear what Warren would say, but most measurers say that whitetails are the hardest to measure because there's just so many different antler variations and every every set of antlers is different so most guys are like white tails are the most difficult i just from being around warren enough i would say that it's he would go off of it depends on the deer because yeah. the majority of them as long as there's something i mean they could be big but it's just a little time consuming to score them properly but right. you get into some where it's just these freak bucks and you got points going everywhere that's when it gets difficult, especially when they have points that you're trying to figure out. Does it have a common base? Is it an extra time? Is it abnormal? And yeah, that's where he'd probably be. Like, yep, it's a it's a tough one. <laughs> yeah, did, for sure. Did you ever see a picture of the butcher buck? That one that was just like this three hundred inch, like massive stuff. It was just crazy. Just a bush on the top of his head. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And that I remember one. Was, that. Yeah, it was just just. Like it took our guys, it took, we have at our panel, we have some of the best measures in the world. I mean, these people measure more bucks than anybody else in the world. And we had panels of three of those guys and all three panels measured it. And there John, it is. what? yeah, that thing is just crazy. And then what did it? They got within what three eighths or something. <laughs> was, yeah. All all three combined were within yeah. three eighths on that. Oh thing. my gosh! I couldn't get within thirty inches on that thing. No. Seriously, 
No yeah. way. Yeah. There's yeah. yeah. Oh Brian is just such gosh, a, that is impressive how accurate they are. Yeah, that guy and he's set Brian was such a cool guy. He's we actually met him there and, and I'm like, hey man, if you could take I didn't know who he was. I was like, if you could take any one of these trophies, and we're looking at this whole room of like monsters. Ten and new said, world records. There were ten world records in the room. Yeah. And I said, if you could take any one of these, which one would you take? And so we're kind of kicking it back and forth. And he says, I'd take that one. I'm like, and you know, open foot or open mouth, insert foot. And I was like, really? You would take that one? I said, do you have any idea how much grief that caused my measures? And him and his two buddies just started <laughs> busting up laughing. And it was his buck. And I was, thank goodness I didn't say anything rude about it other than it was. And it was legitimately a nightmare for them to measure. So. Yeah, I can't imagine. What, they probably had to do that five or six times to make sure they were good. Oh, those guys just, it, how many hours did it take each team? It's like three like eight. hours or something. No, no, like eight per, per team. It, it was yeah. eight total. So four, four hours, four hours per team. Yeah. yeah that's crazy. It took a full oh day. Oh my gosh. For each team. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's a little bit different than the tailgate method. Yeah. No kidding. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so what is, uh, so Issa, what is your favorite thing to chase? Is it whitetails? Man, they have been asking me, I'm, I'm down in Alabama right now, chasing turkeys for the first time. And they've been asking me that everybody, and I can't get past a whitetail right now. Living in Iowa, the, the deer are just, I got the bug, I guess. And that's the most common thing I hunt. But at the same time, it's every year, it's so much different. I, I'd love to go shoot other things too, but that is my, I'm way too obsessed with it. Yeah. That's Dylan. That's the one he, he would pick. I'm, I'm not sure what I yeah. pick. It depends on the day. Some days I'm like, oh man, I just like chasing elk. Then other days I look at these caribou and I'm like, man, that's a lot of like, bone up there and yeah other times you just never know it's i like chasing pronghorns too they're kind of fun yeah. especially with the boats fun to get out there and see them and observe them and stuff so and uh, it's not that so it's not that i don't like up. hunting other things it's just when the question is posed as if you had to choose one thing to hunt i would choose whitetails only because i'm in whitetail country if you chose elk then you have to you know i have to travel you know, I only get to hunt them twice a year, maybe. So, you know, it's not that I'm I don't like hunting that. other things. It's just whitetails. Man, I could be to Oklahoma in 30 minutes, Arkansas in three hours, Missouri in three hours, Iowa in five hours. So I would have to choose whitetails because I can hunt so many in a year, so many different places. Just because it's so much easier. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. Yep. Yeah. And what's, what's the most difficult thing you've ever hunted? Well, to be honest, as far as turkeys go, just specifically, Alabama has been like, it's, I, I've learned that it's not necessarily the difficulty of the birds, but the lack of birds, but it's so popular. Like everybody here, turkey hunts, that's their thing. Mm. But there's the, like you go to Iowa and you're like, my dad just drove by 17 Jake's all together. And you don't, it, these guys are like watching four or five toms every year. Like I'm watching deer. Really? And so it's tough, but the the one that i would say is probably the most difficult would be that i've i've done is a genuine true spot and stock antelope not like behind a decoy not like waiting on anything but genuinely trying to get close to one with a bow yeah that's not easy they can see really well and you and guys have a pretty crazy doesn't lend itself you guys as a family yeah. have some pretty crazy success rates in doing so though well, so we, we do some spot and stock. And when I, the reason I clarified doing a genuine spot and stock is because we'll go do Warren. I can't even tell you how many he's killed. They're using a, like a cow decoy or some form of sheet like that and scoots up, just keeps going closer, closer, closer and gets close enough to shoot. And uh, that works really well. I mean, you, you got to do a couple of them to get it. But as far as like a genuine spot and stock where you're just crawling up to him and stuff, we've only done that a handful of times and it's, oh. it's tough. Yeah. They're just the, the country they're in. There's just, sometimes there isn't anything to hide a bread box between you and them a mile away. Uh -uh. There's, 
you know, some places well, you put like, a 10 oh, by 42 a... binocular on an animal. Uh uh-uh. uh. You ain't getting yeah. by with much. Yeah. So and so how about this year? What was your highlight of, of your season this last season? That wouldn't even be a kill. That's right off the top of my head. And I that is uh I took one of my best friends, I took him two years ago to kill his first deer or first buck, I guess, killed it with a muzzleloader and he wanted to try it with a bow this year, this past season. And it was uh, the first year that I had decided out of my own stupidity, I guess, uh, to choose to help him first off, learn how to shoot a bow and shoot his first deer with a bow, as well as it was the first time I've ever picked a specific deer out to hunt. And he had, me and him were hunting. It was like our 15th day, had not got him a buck yet. And we had my target he's he's right around the 170 mark and comes in to 15 yards and he passed him just just because he knew that that was my target and passed him and said it's it's your deer to kill didn't kill him didn't get close to him again for the rest of the year i don't even know if he's alive but i had him 15 yards never had any idea we were there okay if any of my buddies are listening <laughs> you've got a good brother <laughs> and good friends <laughs> just so you know, ain't one of y'all i'm gonna pass a 170 buck for love you ain't gonna do it I, <laughs> dude i guess sometimes i can't even let them shoot first on a flock of geese i sure as heck ain't gonna do it on a 170 class buck so that that was he gets so much flack on both ways everybody's saying man that is that was the right thing to do and then the other half is saying you are an absolute nutcase you shoot it especially he's never shot a deer with his bow and he passed a boot and crockett right there really yeah come on put it down down. that's yeah i'm in the second camp he's crazy wow Uh, or you got dirt on the majority that's the other thing is you must have something on this guy that you know could cause him grief uh there's not a bad bone in his body. So oh. it's just him being a good person. Jeez. Easton, you should never, ever invite me and Jason to hunt with you because Dude, uh, you would have a different story to tell if that was, if you had me or Jason out there. Hey, yeah. I'm okay with it. I told, I argued with him the night before. I said, hey, if this deer comes in, because we're going to go into his spot, shoot him. You have the green light. And I'd say the same thing. So I was trying to get him to shoot. He wouldn't do it. What's this guy's name? Joey. <laughs> Joey. Hey, Joey, you want to come home with Katz. me, man? I got a spot for you. <laughs> Open there invite you for somebody like that. Whew. I'm not allowed <laughs> to hunt with Jason no more. I'm telling you, man. That's, yeah. And see, Dylan. What'd you do? Shoot he, his number one? No, nah, I shot his forkies. Yeah. That's, <laughs> see, Dylan, Dylan and I won't ever shoot your butt because we're going to be tagged out on the little guys on day two. We're going to be like right. day one, we'll look around yep. day two. We're going to choke and shoot something small. And then the 170 <laughs> will just have a free run of the place. Yeah, That's my thing is I, I never pass. I do not pass deer. This is the first year that I've sat there. I'm like, yo, I'm going to pick a deer or a certain caliber and go after it. And that was the first year I've tried it. And that's what happens. <laughs> yeah. That's now, know, man. Now, hold on. Let's, let's dive into this. End of the All season. Right. End of the season. Are you a little bitter that you chose to do that? Or do you wish, are you happy you did it? Or do you wish you would have just punched your tag? Very happy. Uh Uh-uh. Nope. I I didn't regret anything from this season. Granted, it was uh, by far like double the longest season I've ever had in my entire life. I had, I think, 63 sits in the end. And uh, it was like anything that could go wrong would go wrong after that moment. He turned around and shot his first buck that night. And uh, after that, I asked him too. I said, are you going to regret this? And he's, he'll never, he'll never regret it. And I, and for me, it's same thing. I wasn't carrying my bow and I'd said, I wasn't going to carry my bow and uh, I wouldn't change it because you know, when, when are you ever going to have something else like that happen in the woods and be able to appreciate something like that? So hopefully if I, if I'm lucky, if he lived, I think, I think he lived. And if he did, then he might be smaller or bigger next year. Who knows? But that deer has waste way too much history not to go after him. Wow. Yeah. That's uh yeah, once again, if my buddies are listening, I'd have had my bow with me. Hey, I'd have I'd have knocked them out the way to get a shot of them. So and oh, yeah, I've done stuff. it before. I'll do it again. It's okay. It's all right. Hey, there's there's nothing wrong with that. Teach their no. own, right? 
No. And it's not, it's not that I'm competitive against them. I'm just competitive against myself. And Hey, that'd be, in the, you know, that'd be my biggest white tail ever. So I'm like, Oh, it was, it was, yeah. it would be my biggest ever as well. <laughs> Gosh. Yeah. And see, and on the other side of that, you know, Joey, be glad you didn't shoot one like that for your first one. Cause then where are you going to go from there? Then you're going to be like, oh, I don't want to shoot one unless it's mm-hmm. bigger. And then, you know, you sit for seven years and never draw your bow and you're like, yeah, this isn't right. The, I can do this craziest, on the nature channel. <laughs> <laughs> the craziest part about that is where Warren had tagged out already and he's like begging me, Hey, I I'm coming hunting with you guys. Cause I already, I already killed too quick. I got to hunt. I got to hunt. And I am very reluctant of that. And he convinced me, I said, all right, well, you're going to sit in a tree on your own 20 yards behind us. and You better not make a sound. And this deer comes walking by. And the first thing I get a text from Warren says, uh, is he not going to shoot? And I said, no, nope, he just chose not to. He goes, I don't know anybody crazy enough to have never shot a deer in their <laughs> life to pass that caliber of a deer. So you got yourself a good friend. But he turned around that night and shoots. Uh, it, I don't even, the deer. I don't think he even broke a hundred inches, and he was over the moon. It was absolutely pumped That's awesome. about it. Yep. I I mean I get wow. pumped about him too though, so I can't. Yeah. You know. <laughs> so if, yeah. So what you're saying is if there's this ever a special Olympics for archery hunting, he's gonna be in that. <laughs> is that? <laughs> I don't think you can say that. Oh, you that, can't. that is that is the Whew. best comment I've heard about that hunt in the past okay. month. <laughs> I'm, t- oh, I'm just like, <laughs> Dylan, you know. Whew. I, okay. Yeah, cut that one out. <laughs> you know, I don't know that we will. Maybe we will. I say leave it. That's good stuff right uh, there. That was funny. You, know, you got me, Jay. <laughs> yeah. I didn't mean it's a dig. It's just like, wow, that's, I don't know. Hey, more power to him. You know, How else happening. do you mean that? He said, I don't yeah, mean there's it. There's only a dig. one way you take there's that. There's only one way you can mean that. <laughs> what are you, what you going to do? <laughs> you know? Oh, it's, my. I'm claiming, hey, hey man, Joey, we're two weeks Joey, shoot me convention. an email. Joey, shoot me an email. Send me your address. I'll send you some Pope and Young swag out to make up for that yeah. one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, he would love I'm, it. He will wrap it like no other too. I'll tell uh, he you, deserves yeah. it after after Sit. after the executive director bashes him. He deserves it. So I'm just saying. I hey, I respect that he could do it. I just don't have the. I've been hunting for like decades, and I don't have the wherewithal to do that. So that's oh, I, that is that is well, that is the best comment I've heard on that one. Yeah. Oh, that was great. So, yeah, we'll we'll, we'll send him some goodies, but no, it's. Uh, it's one of those things where like I grew up, man, that's, we're filling the freezer today. And I just didn't have that, that mentality. And, and man, you talk to these guys that, you know, the Chuck Adams and Frank Noskas and Alan Bolins and Jim Willems and Jack Frost, all these guys that have, that, I mean, they're hunting giants and it's a different mindset. And, you know, this year I, I went and hunted the Midwest for whitetails and uh, I, I could have shot a smaller buck, but like you're talking about, I'm not sorry that I didn't. And yeah. uh, it was, you know, I had, it was neat. I had an opportunity. I had him at like six yards, had no idea I was there. Pretty little eight point in the snow. Got some great pictures. It was just a beautiful, beautiful experience. And uh and so I've finally gotten to the point where, I mean, I still like to punch day, but I'm, I'm trying, I'm doing my best to, to wait at least a couple more days if I can for something better. Yep. See, I'm, so, I'm vice sure. versa. I I'm on the other end of that spectrum. I was at Liberty ranch last year, which is where we're raffling off a hunt with Chuck. Oh yeah. And uh, Corey had given me two bucks and he said, it's very possible. You'll see these deer don't shoot them. And I'm like, okay. And this deer comes in and he's a stud. And I'm like, looking at the picture, I'm like, crap, I know it's him. So I'm texting Corey. I'm like, you sure, bud? Cause he's here at 12 yards. <laughs> he you back. He's like, no, you can't shoot it. I'm like, come on, man. Hunter bucks. Like I'm bribing him. He's like, can't shoot it. I'm like, you suck. I hate you. Like <laughs> I was ready to punch <laughs> the tag and be like, sorry, bro. I thought it was a different deer. Yeah. But I didn't. Yeah. Yeah. I see. And, and I'd be okay there. Cause I, I just be like, Hey man, I, I, geez, that's the same buck. I didn't recognize it. I'm a, I'm a Western hunter. I didn't know that that was. 
You can't play the yeah. dumb card on that because I guarantee they showed you trail camera pictures left and right too. Yeah. Oh, I had them on my phone. I was looking at the phone and looking. Oh, exactly. At looking at the phone, <laughs> looking at the deer, and I'm like, well, I could mistake it. <laughs> Uh, I, I, we've brought some people in and we, we don't bring a ton, but every once in a while, and we got a few that we got to make sure that like, Hey, we've, this deer has been around a little bit. I'll print a, print a picture out and laminate that sucker. Here you go. <laughs> you, you, yeah. If you mistake it now, it's on you. Off yeah. limits. Yeah. Yeah. Like it, now I can see that if it was like some big, like double drop time. Well, no, if it was a double drop time, I'd, I'd have, popped it anyway oh, i guess but. you would have not have been questioning <laughs> yeah. you would have been shooting before you even got a chance to question yourself yeah i'm like oh man you won't believe the buck i just got and it'll be like yeah i will because i just showed you a picture of it <laughs> oh yeah gosh that does like for me oh that's nah, funny it's it's uh, no if somebody said not to do it i probably wouldn't but i guess we'll find out that's a good good position to be in that's for sure yeah. Yeah. So now I'm, I'm actually proud and, and a little bit jealous of Joey that, that he has the fortitude to hold off on that. Well, I, not, I promise you that I was, I mean, at, he's my, he's one of my best friends and I, I was very angry with him. Cause I'm like, dude, that buck, a deer of that caliber, especially cause that was on a place that I just, I don't, I, it's not like I have all the rights to it. Other people can hunt it. I'm like, the chance of that deer getting that close and getting that opportunity ever again is not Slim great. Slim to none. So, yeah. Yeah. Man. But wow. you, you live and you, as long as you can hang your hat on something, you got nothing to be ashamed about. So, yeah. Yeah. So is he hooked now? Is he getting, is he a bow hunter oh, for life? It's, it's bad, man. It is like it, it, you hear guys talking about if they get a friend or like a girlfriend into it and they get hooked, they created a monster because they just want to do yeah. it all the time. I he's he's on my side everywhere now. He wants to go to everything deer hunting, everything turkeys, everything. Nice. Is he so, coming to Reno? He's not actually. He's uh, going to be like two hours away. Down, he's from Iowa too, but he's going to be a couple hours down there doing some training for his job and going to be a couple hours away, but. Well, tell him to slide up there on Saturday. I'll buy him dinner. I, right, that's probably I'll the least, it, least I could owe him after that. <laughs> no, that's, uh, yeah. Hey, you know, I'm not afraid to, to uh, put my foot in my mouth. Hey, it's all uh, good. He can take it. We're big boys. Fires. Yeah. So tell me, so Easton, tell us about, um, you, a lot of our listeners are going to know who you are and, and what you're all about, but tell us about the TV show. You guys also run a youth camp. Tell, tell us about some of the things you guys have going on in your world. So to, to summarize the raised hunting is the TV show and we've, we're now going into our 10th season. So we've been around for a little bit. It's been since I was a little kid. Now I'm looking back, looking at myself, like, Holy cow, we've actually been around for a little bit. Um, but we're a TV show on the outdoor channel and, uh, we're going into the 10th season. We kind of now have, uh, expanded more to youtube so it's a lot more fun for our viewers that they can go watch like like that what i was just telling you guys about that story with joey people can go watch like a 30 minute episode on on youtube of just like a more raw format type of show and episode on youtube and then they can go see an actual cinematic show on the outdoor channel um so we've been doing that for a while and with a following has just been everybody that follows us and is big fans is just a great great genuine group of people that are they're all doing it for the same reasons we are it's just it's a love it's something they're growing up doing and they're getting kids out there and stuff um and then with the kids part we uh since i i couldn't even tell you i think i was two one or two when i started going to these camps in the mountains of montana and uh it was in ennis montana and it was at the time there was no name for it it was just a kids camp you go up and you camp for uh four days three nights and tents and you stay in the mountains, you learn all about some survival stuff, bow hunting. Um, you learn some extra things just about like mountains or they'll bring in some like DNR officers, stuff like that. Just a lot of fun for kids to learn about hunting. Well, then we, uh, I want to say it was about 11 years later, we actually made Raised It Full Draw. Raised It Full Draw is a nonprofit company that we do um, separate from Raised Hunting, but because Raised Hunting is obviously a company and then Raised It Full Draw, we've been doing now in six six states i think is what we got a new one opening this year and we bring 50 kids 
it's same thing, four days, three nights. Um, but we've really geared it more towards bow hunting. Like you, your start to finish kids come and stay in tents and get that raw experience of what it's like to be in the wilderness, um, and learn how to shoot a bow, whether they know how to shoot one or not, we'll supply one for them. Um, all the way to the fact of how to, how to field dress a, a whitetail. Um, and then at the end of that, we, we give them a test and so they can take their bow hunter education test and they have their bow hunter education license at the end of it. And so we've, I, we're, we've done a couple thousand kids now over the past, wow. I want to say six or seven years that I have their bow hunter education now. And That's it's awesome. honestly, it's, it's just it, the past few years has blown up. I mean, we went from two States, we did Montana and Iowa to six in a couple of years and we got people trying to start them everywhere now. So nice. Well, it's, yeah. you know, one of the things is being in this industry for a long time, you know, you meet a, a variety of folks and, and everybody has their opinions about different things. And, and your family um, and your organization, I, it's, it's hard to find anything. You know, it, it's hard to find folks that, that are anything other than complimentary with you. And so that's, that's always nice because that's not that it's not always that way with a lot of folks in, in our industry. So well, that, that's really good that. to hear. Um, and I, I just to like give my dad a huge compliment, not to be biased, but ever since me and Warren were little, I mean, we may have some out there ideas or uh, different ways we t like to hunt. And he's always told us, hey, this is this is how we're going to do it. We're going to trial and error. Try, try, try. And if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. But you got to try things. Somebody else does it this way. It's not a big deal. If it works, it works. It's how they hunt. And that's what. I feel like we try to push a lot, especially now the hunting world and the hunting community, I feel like it's very divided. And, uh, it's just, it seems like no matter what you do, you're going to get judged one way or another. And so we try to wear, we wear our heart on our sleeves. Like, Hey, this is our opinion. We might take a stance on something, but if you're doing it somewhat, some other way, it's not, it's not the end of the world. If you're, if you're doing it for the right reasons and stuff, we, we have no place to say anything about it, but yeah, it's good. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. We, uh, yeah, folks try to uh, a lot of times single Pope and young out for some of those types of things. Well, what do you think about this or what do you, and so we're a lot of times we're put on the hot seat, whether we want to be or not, just because of, yeah. you know, for 63 years, we've been doing, you know, kind of the, the voice of bow hunters in North America and, and promoting bow hunting and protecting. And so, that Pope and Young has been one of the best, uh, I think, relationships that we could have come into play with, especially going from your guys' point of view to like the raised it full draw. And the causes that we're behind is just line up extremely, extremely well. And it's for the better of hunting, to better the hunting community and yeah, just bring goodness to it. I was yeah. brainstorming with somebody, um, the lady that runs your kids' camps. Uh, I don't, I don't yeah. remember her name. Donnie's? But, yeah. Yep. And uh, I basically just told her, I'm like, well, I'll tell you what I want to see. I want to see everybody that leaves raised at full draw, a Pope and Young member. Uh, however, we need to do that. That's what I would like to see. And she was just, she was excited about it. I was excited about it. So hopefully that's something we can work out in the future. You know, I mean, if you're going to be a bow hunter and that's the messaging that we want to teach the kids and and the community that if, if you're a bow hunter, then you belong to Pope and Young. Uh, and so yep. these kids, you know, be it seven, eight, nine years old, Hey, if, if you're a bow hunter, you, you might not have ever even shot an animal yet, but, but if you are going to be a bow hunter, then this is where you belong. So, uh, yeah. welcome, welcome to, to the club, you know, welcome to Pope and young. And so, um, whatever we need to do, I, I want to make that happen. Jay, that's what I'd like to see happen. Okay. Well, you, and you keep working Don East is like, like I said, how it's blown up. We used to have to try to run that with our, just our family running around during the summer yeah. doing those camps. And finally it got to the point where it's so big that we now Donnie's can do it full time and she is blown it up even more. And so the fact that she's working with you guys on that is huge too. I, I yeah. hope we can get something worked out like that because absolutely that would be big. Yeah. It's, um, we, we found that partnerships like that are, are the key to getting things accomplished because you're so much stronger together. It's mm -hmm. really, uh, we've had some, some really good ones lately, done some conservation work with mule deer foundation, wild sheep foundation and, and others. And, and so anytime we can partner with, 
with an or you know like-minded group we're we're all in yeah so i, I just just looking at the like you get two companies like that or two organizations like that it's one it's hard to find and two it's hard to find within those organizations because you look at dylan you look at jason you look at all these people that are part of what you guys are you guys all have that same value and that same same perspective of what hunting is and should be and then you find another company that lines up with that too or another organization that does this or does that it's it's huge because you can your power is together now and it there's no reason to divide things there's no reason yeah, for yeah. we're all doing the same thing and we all love doing it that's why we do it so why go against each other let's make it big yeah absolutely right. well it's uh i'm i'm really anxious to to hear um your experience once you've been to convention and and talk to folks because it's uh we we're talking to somebody the other day and it was one of those things where the the first convention i went into for pope and young you know you hear about the organization and i'd had maybe some not not any bad notions whatsoever but i'd kind of thought it was a little bit different. I was like, oh, you know, it's a bunch of guys want, want to get awards on stage and everything. And then you get there and it's all about like, like artists, but it's all about the animal, putting the animals on display, the very best, the awards are for that particular animal. You know, it's why we don't do, uh, you know, what some call hunter awards, like the slams and different things. But uh, yeah, the thing that just, that I, my experience was the first time is that folks that, that you've been reading about for years, you know, that you've, you've watched them on TV, you, you've read their stuff and they're just hanging out at a convention, enjoying a good time. And they're as excited to hear about your activities and your adventures as you are to hear about theirs and so i, I yep. hope i'll be anxious to hear your take on that and hopefully it's the same for you as it has been for some of the other folks we've talked to i i'm really excited to be just just like what you said you grew up watching some of these people and i'm not i'm not old i'm 22 so i i've been 10 years ago being 12 i mean just the fact that i'm even thinking that i'm going to have go hunt and get filmed to do something i mean i've done that since i was a little kid but never showing anybody and I'm watching all these people and now I've grown up now 22, like I said, and I'm meeting some of these people. It's like, man, this is, this is pretty cool because we're, we love hunting so much when you love it as much as a lot of us do. And a lot of other people do, you don't have to know who anybody is. Even if they, you have watched, you walk up to them and they tell them about a deer and they're going to be very attentive and they're going to want to know every yeah. detail about it. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, it's neat because you hear people talking, they're like, oh my gosh, I just sat down to have a sandwich and I was talking to so-and-so and they asked me about my hunt. <laughs> it's like, yeah. yeah, here's somebody who's hunted all over the world. You know that because you've read about it. And then all of a sudden they're yeah. asking you, how was your, so the other thing that gets me is who, who was it that we had on Dylan that, I mean, oh, it was Jack Frost. And we were talking about oh yeah things and we're like, Jack, what, what hunt do you have that you're, you're most looking forward to and he says man my next one he says i'm going back to the family farm to hunt whitetails he says i, I think it was like four doe tags or something yeah it was and, just white tail does he said i don't have a buck tag yeah. i got four doe tags so so here's a guy's you know literally been leopard hunting in africa and shot you know all, all the sheep with his butt and everything else and he's excited to go white tail hunting at home with some doe tags you know, that and is the, the funniest part about just hunters in general is not to stereo like give it a stereotype but it's predominantly males there's the female side of it is growing largely and very quickly um but it's not typically your most emotional people yet all these guys are so sentimental because some of the things you grow up doing that with a family member you your, your grandpa taught you something or or maybe you taught your kids you're the first one to do it and like that i'm sure he has tons and tons of memories on that farm that's why he's going there and yeah. he's so excited to go shoot a doe because he's going to he gets to relive some stuff. Yeah. So like with, with your family, if you had to pick somebody in your family, who's, who's the best one to hunt with? Oh, you're setting up for failure on that. One. Oh yeah. <laughs> it depends, we're here, man. We're here to ask the tough questions. Uh huh. I'll, I'll answer that. If I had to pick one, I'll answer that for all of them. And if uh, I had to uh, pick one. Yeah. You got to pick one. I, 
Dude, you always go with mom. I, always go with mom. Always yeah. keep my, mom happy. My, hold on. The issue with picking my mom is that if are we going to hunt or are we going to be together? Because me and my mom, that's when I was in high school, I was going to hunt with my mom and she was my rock. I'd be sitting there and that's she that's where me and her got to talk. That's where me and her got to have our mother to son t- time. And then like me and Warren, that you don't get a better combo than that in our family. Like that with me and him are we're in sync with each other. But I, I think if I had to pick one, and I really, really hope Warren doesn't listen to this or my mom, but I'm I think I'm going with dad. I, yeah. And that's take that's that's changed over the years, but as I've gotten a little older, I think it's I'd have to if I'd pick one, it's it's old pops. All right. But luckily, you don't have to pick one. You get to hunt. You with don't them have all. to pick. You hunt yeah, I bounce all. around. It's great. Yeah. I I had every one of them filming me at some point this year with how long my season was. So <laughs> now, which one's the best shot? Oh, not now a, we're getting down to the nitty gritty. Oh, it's not. It's not a question. You you on a target though. Warren will. I put him against almost anybody, and that's not supposed to be biased. He is incredible shot. Uh, way better than but i hear I get, a butt coming uh, like, I he, he clarified he's like on a target warren is an incredible shot however if you you put my dad in the stand the man does not miss he is yeah. in my life i think i could count on one hand which is t- crazy because we always give people crap like you're gonna tell me you bow hunt you never missed no you either haven't bow hunted or you're lying and I tell you what, he is the past maybe 10 years, maybe five or six animals, not at what he's aiming at. He is by far the, like, he's, he's there for one reason. He's going to get it done. He goes into yeah. kill mode. It, there, it's there's... crazy. It really is. Yeah. See, that that happens because I'll, I'll get guys and they'll be like, oh, well, well how, how many points did I have? And I was like, man, I don't know. As soon as I decide that I'm, it's a taker, then I focus yeah. on one spot and that's exactly where I want that arrow going. Yep. And they'll be like counting, you know, ticks on the left ear. And I'm now I, but they're counting ticks on the left ear of a, you know, animal that just got away from them. So. Yeah. He, that's, I, I tell you what, like it, as far as the shot goes, it's, it's incre- incredible to me to watch because I, we just did a podcast on ours the other day and we were talking about, misses how do you handle a mess and i'm sitting there just kind of refreshing my memory a little bit and i can think of two animals that have ever rattled him enough that like he gets in that kill mode he's rolling like you ain't you're not getting him mm-hmm. out of it and one of them was the deer i was telling you guys about the 179 and seven eights which is understandable but he had tons of history with that deer and the other one was a turkey that a turkey uh, you know, all right he had he, one turkey and i don't mean just turkeys in general he had three years of history with this turkey and he sat no decoy no calls nothing all day with my mom and they sat there did not get out of the blind and he shot him in like last 15 minutes of light and did not make a good shot and ended up getting a trail camera picture of the neighbor's dog he had found it and had it in his mouth like Uh-oh. a week later and you, you get, it's pretty distinct for that bird. That's the only reason we knew what it was. But out of the, all the years I've hunted with my dad and grown up hunting with him, two, two animals I can think of that rattled him. Huh. How about you? What's rattled you? Everything. Oh, my gosh. It's <laughs> 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 so bad. I, we, that's, that's funny, too. That same podcast we're talking about. It was like a light flip for me because, I would, like, for deer, he, he always gave me the green light. He's like, hey. Anything that comes in, you need the experience. If you if you're excited about it, shoot it. And I would get so crazy nervous that like whitetails would get me going. When I was younger, though, a turkey, I I I missed a Jake in Nebraska one time because I was sick to my stomach because I couldn't handle it. And I like it came walking in and I was wow. like, Dad, I think I, I need to go back. Like I, I don't think I can do this. I'm I'm gonna throw up. I'm not doing good. And he said, No, you're all good, man. You're just nervous. I said, I don't think so. And I missed. The moment that Jake walked away, I said, Dad, I don't think I'm sick anymore. I'm all right. <laughs> see, see now this is how you can tell you're, you're talking to somebody younger who, you know, isn't familiar with missing. Because back in the day when when your trajectories were not near as flat, and I, sh- I shot an 80-pound bow, but the arrows, you know, those aluminum arrows were so heavy and just the trajectories were different. And uh, 
You had to like, sharpen your broadheads out of rocks. Exactly. Yeah. After you yeah, handcraft them out of rocks. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, I'm telling you, though, they're, like, this is like, imagine a day pre laser rangefinder. It's like your, yeah. your rangefinder was, mm, I think that's about 40 yards. Yeah. And then if, if you shot low, like, you know, if you hit him, then, oh, yep, that was 40 yards. If, if you shot low, oh, I guess he was farther if you shot over his back oh i guess it was 30 yards so yeah. but it was you know i mean so when i people talk about a miss i'm like man i've missed because that's the only way you know you just guess and apparently i wasn't yeah. very good at guessing so you know i'm sure you I, do quick, if I missed yeah it's put or knock another arrow <laughs> <laughs> sometimes they'll stop man it's like, oh, okay well last funny. time i guessed 40 and i shot over his back so he ran about 10 yards out so this must be 40 yeah. <laughs> yep that was 40 that's, that's good math right there <laughs> oh man so, so easton yeah. did you uh did you get bit with the traditional bug at all like your brother did uh not to take it from him but i started that nice. i my my issue with that though is that like i said warren is an incredible shot he was he he easily could kind of bounce back and forth from his compound to his recurve and uh, shoot them both extremely well. I had to go full in on the recurve to shoot it well. And yeah. so I would I would have to practice. And he was practicing every day with it too. But he, if he needed to pick his compound up, he'd go back to it. I couldn't switch very well. And shooting that was, I, I didn't let myself actually go. I, I hunted one turkey with it. And I tell you what, that first time, the first couple of times you get that adrenaline rush and you get that like blackout where you like, I don't even remember what I was looking at. I had, I'd been hunting for like from turkeys. Ob well, this one was with a, my first time ever hunting with my recurve and I reaped it behind a decoy. I had to sprint out at these things and get around them, cut them off. And I got right behind them, called them back to me alone. And this turkey comes out five yards and I got to full draw with the recurve and I didn't even aim. I just, I just like, I just got to full draw and let go. And my air goes flying. I'm like, I, I didn't even like pause to think I, I just, I just, <laughs> yeah. so I sat there. I was like, you know what? We're going to pause. I'm going to go get my compound and I'm going to get some experience under my belt so I can control myself a little better. And then we'll come back to this. <laughs> so I actually had the same thing almost exactly. I mean, um, with a white tail though, this deer comes out quick and he, he comes out and he dead stops at 20 yards and it would have by far the biggest deer I've ever shot in my recurve. And, uh, I, after I shoot, I shoot right over his back and I'm like, what just happened? Like, did I even process my shot at all? Or did I like, yeah, I couldn't recap what happened at all. And I was yeah. just like, man, like it just happened so quick and caught me off guard. And yeah. And then the very next morning I'm like, yeah, I'm taking the compound out and shot one of the next morning. <laughs> so I, that, that was the hardest thing for me. I think that like, I, I'll definitely I don't, I don't black out, but you get that adrenaline rush where things go so fast and you miss things in your memory and the recurve, I think there's something about like, not, there's no pin, there's no anchor. There's, there's absolutely nothing. That's like the exact same that you'd have to distinctly remember with like a pin settling on right behind the shoulder. And I think it's a lot easier to let yourself kind of stray away from your yeah. fundamentals and doing it right. Well, that's why, uh, the, the best lesson I ever received was from uh, Harv Ebers, uh, who is one of our founding members. Uh, he's our, our current president's dad. Um, I drove up to Missouri just to spend the day shooting with him. And he said, man, no matter what, you got to have a verbal process that you work through. Every step of your shot, you say, okay, hook, uh, anchor, switch, you know, whatever. And, and no matter what, whether you're shooting a target at five yards or a deer at 25, you walk through those steps each and every time. And uh, that was the best lesson I ever received because it helped me tremendously be able to process the shot as you go. Yeah. I think my bug for that is honestly, the more I thought, because I've a lot of people that I've, I've had a couple new hunters with me in the past few years. And they've asked me that like, Hey, what do you, do you ever think you'll leave a compound? Cause I, I really don't, bow, or I really don't gun hunt hardly at all. And I think right now I'm still, I have so many goals and milestones I want to hit with my bow right now. I think once I start hitting some of those, I'm like, okay, I've, I feel pretty accomplished with this. 
then I'll take that step say, okay, now I can hang this compound up and I'm going to be okay with it. And I'm going to go pick up a recurve. And now I'm going to start everything I just did all over again with a different type. Yeah. But I think that's going to be a long ways down the road. So. Yeah. That's, I, that's a lot of challenge that I don't find myself needing at this point in, in my career. So yeah, I, respect, I feel that. <laughs> I respect people that do it. I mean, you see guys that go do that, and it was, you, you know, like Tavis Rogers that shot that giant blacktail, and uh, it, you know, that's what he hunts with. And I yeah. just, for me, I'm like, holy smokes, man! Because uh, what, Dylan? What's your effective range with with your recurve? Uh, on deer, twenty four yards. Twenty four. Hogs or Is bears, stuff that doesn't jump, I'll shoot it at, at 34, 35, 36, somewhere in there. Okay. See, that's – like every yard is different. I get, like I could get out to 15 to 20 and be pretty consistent. 15, I was really consistent. 20, you're, it's a little bit more difficult. Then you get to like 25, and it's like where did – it's five yards further than 20. Why is this such an issue? <laughs> yeah. See, I shoot – the, the very best that I shoot is 40 yards. Uh, like if you want to shoot for dollar bills, I'm going to shoot at 40 yards, uh, only because my, my arrow is right underneath the target at that point. So, so oh. I, I have a consistent look at the tip of my arrow right underneath. I call it dotting the eye because I literally just put the arrow, you know, right, right under the point and that's where, but when you're talking hunting situations, especially on white tails, you know, with how fast, you know, that bow I'm shooting right now, I'm shooting 172. Um, that's a lot can happen in 40 yards <laughs> on a mm -hmm. white tail. Um, when yeah. you're shooting a bow, that's, you know, 172 feet per second. So, um, yeah. that's, that's why my effective range is, is there. But, um, as far as shooting wise go, uh, the best I'll shoot is 40 yards. Hmm. That's crazy. That's crazy with a recurve. That's impressive. But, uh, but again, it's just because I have a reference, you know, at, at, yeah. at 20 yards, I'm holding three feet under the deer's feet. Um, whereas at 40, I can just put it right underneath the spot I want to hit and, and shoot. Yeah, but you, even if you have a reference, you still get the the. There's no forgiveness whatsoever. So you got yourself. You have to be doing the same exact thing every yeah. time to be consistent. Yeah, and and so you look at there's like you talk to the recurve guys, and there's a huge difference between twenty and thirty yards. And uh, on a compound bow, it's just not much. I mean, I it, it was negligible enough for me that I just skipped the twenty yard pin. And went right yeah. to a 30. So that's my first one. Yep. So and then then to think that there's a whole series of changes between 20 and 30 on a recurve. That's it's a lot more, to think about. <laughs> yeah. More more power to you guys that are out there doing it. I, I wish you well and and nothing but respect. But yeah, it's impressive. So maybe someday, maybe when I grow up. <laughs> so that's what I'm saying too. Yeah. Well, uh, so Easton, let me, let me ask you this. So there's one question we ask every person that we have on the show. When you find yourself, whether you're up in a, up in a tree for, for whitetails or, or chasing uh, antelope or elk up, up on the mountain or out on the plains, what is one kind of non-traditional item that you like to have with you on that is uh <laughs> that one is tough um his buddy joey I, i'm telling <laughs> you that's, <laughs> I, that's not even his buddy anymore i i feel close enough to joey that i like to call joey my buddy too now yeah there you go you know him pretty well i i don't i mean i i carry a lot of like your general your general stuff i guess um i think something that i'd say that maybe not necessarily an actual utility, but I do it on purpose is I, I used to, when I was younger, I would wear stupid stuff. I mean, obviously I'm going to wear something that's going to conceal me in some form of camo and stuff. I now will wear, like I I'm going to put on some crazy camo bucket hat because I want to have fun with it. or I'm going to do some weird face paint or something. And so my difference is I know that the majority of us are probably using the same things. I like to stand out. I like to be different. So like I made a Jersey for us that so we hunt in jerseys. We have camo jerseys that we hunted with our names on them and stuff. Just it's stupid, but <laughs> I absolutely love it. Cause it's like, nobody else is doing it. So, um, 
Yeah, I, I, if I can think of something that's extremely utility wise, I'll come back to it and I'll tell you. Okay. I heard about a, I, I heard about a, it was on the Meat Eater podcast and he was a nudist elk hunter. He was not nudist like in everyday life, but when he hunted, he hunted completely nude. And I was just like, wow. You ain't doing that in Mexico. No, he oh, said, no, Texas. No, thanks. The, the, the best part of the whole, the whole podcast was the guy saying, listen, you want to be aware of the wind direction? Just hunt naked. Like you'll, you never have to guess the wind direction if you're naked. <laughs> no, I can't tell you one now that I just thought of that. I do. I was just telling somebody and I walk in. So in Iowa, it gets, I mean, it'll get pretty cold, but when I'm in a tree stand, I don't like to, there's not very many boots that I really enjoy sitting in. So a lot of times I'll throw on some rubber boots and I walk in and I got on my back house slippers that are fluffy. And so I'll get to the stand. I see house I, slippers. I either leave my boots. I don't really like leaving them at the bottom. So a lot of times I got a little uh, rubber wire tied together and I set them on a limb next to me. I get in the stand and I sit in uh, basically, literally house slippers that are fluffy. <laughs> and it is 10 times more okay. comfortable. My feet stay warm. Oh, and I'm that'll be on the list. Say, that'll be on the list for sure. <laughs> There's my son. <laughs> little Dylan, that's scary. Yeah. Don't make fun of him like that. Dang. Hey, <laughs> you guys are shooting at my boy too. <laughs> so when you're talking about being up there in your fuzzy slippers, are, are these like moccasin slippers or are these like, you know, like, like bunny slippers, like with the little oh. ears and the nose and the whiskers and stuff? <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> you, you, should, you should know me better than that. <laughs> No, I got hey, like you like to be different, man. Now that is this, that's the, will, that's the video I'm I, watching on YouTube. I will give you Here's that. No, Easton Holder <laughs> in his bunny slippers shooting 170 buck. That, that is the be, video. No, I it's just like your regular leather moccasins, but they've got like I don't know rabbit hair inside or something. It's soft. <laughs> it feels like a cloud on that's your. That's awesome. What about the one time? uh it was one of the bone, uh, not bone collector, one of the buck commander guys hunting in a full Santa suit, beard and all. And, uh, <laughs> oh, you did that in, turkey in, hunting, right? Maybe. Yeah, maybe. I don't remember, but I, I remember just watching him hunt in a full Santa suit, red and white beard, everything. It was awesome. See, bunny slippers. Not yet. That's a good yeah, answer. There is, I, I wear a hat that's a beanie and it's red and blue. And the amount of people, I killed my biggest deer ever out of it. And the amount of people that comment on any video they see with me on it, they're like, you do know deer can see red and blue, right? I'm like, I'm wearing it every single time it's killed my biggest deer. So I'm going to keep putting it on. <laughs> I'm too superstitious for that. Yeah. I've heard something about blue, but I've never heard anybody say that deer yeah, can see red. Yeah, they don't see red. red. They see hues of heard- blue. I saw, I've, I've known the blue one and I, somebody, multiple people kept commenting red on our, this year, they, uh, cause I wear it on the podcast. They're like, you better not wear that red hat out there. I'm like, I, I don't think the red really matters, but we'll take it. <laughs> I don't, yeah. I don't think it does. No, it doesn't. That's, but I've, I've yes. also heard, I've, I heard somebody say, uh, it was one of the deer biologists for the NDA. And he said, if you're sitting in a tree stand wearing streaks of blue is actually very beneficial because when a deer looks up, they see streaks of blue for the sky. So if they look up and they see one blob of brown and green that's dark, you know, then you stick out. But if you have streaks of blue, they see the streaks of blue through the trees like they see the the, the, the sky behind the trees. So it's actually beneficial to wear streaks huh. of blue. That that I feel like that actually checks out. <laughs> I that's what that that's what he was saying. Work. Yeah, he's saying you know if you're wearing all dark colors and a deer looks up, then they see a dark blob of and nothing through it. But yeah, but if they look up and see streaks of blue, then your silhouette is broken up like they would see it. You know, like they would yep. see looking up normally. Yeah, interesting. I don't know. I mean, I see people that ha- their camo has to match, and I'm like, dude, you're hunting something that can't see color. They don't. They can't tell whether that's gray or tan or green. Yeah. OCD so. man. Yeah. I, I intentionally go the other way. I'm like, I don't want to be the guy who's like just X, Y, Z camo or just that camo. Or so. so I'm like, I always have at least two camo types on. Yeah. Just, just to make people mad. Much. Yeah. You got to yeah. mix it up. 
just to make people mad. Yeah. Sometimes. Jason, well, if you, you, he's wearing that Kings on top, but I guarantee you there's QU or Sitka underneath it just to just to make people mad. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> it's, a, it's a talking point. You know somebody's going to make a comment. Yeah. yeah. You know, and yeah, people, it's it's funny. And I've <laughs> I've seen so many, like, especially online, man, these people are like, oh, well, you know, you think you're better because you wear brand X camo. And it's like, no, I'm better because after you're, cold and wet and sitting in the truck i'm still going to be out in the field because i'm warm true. and dry and comfortable and it's going to give me another two hours and oh guess what that's just when the you know buck turkey or whatever happens to be coming by and i've yeah i've done it before so that's that's why i use it not because it's trendy Yep. Well, I'll tell you what, Easton, we're excited to to have you come out and uh, talk in Reno for us and uh, looking forward to, to meeting you in person and shaking a hand. And uh, hopefully you can get Joey up there so I can buy him dinner. <laughs> I'll have to reach out to him. <laughs> so um, it'll be a good time. I'm really excited about it, it's, especially because it's going to be my first one, too. So it, it's going to be great. We've got, gosh, we got what, 100 right at a hundred vendor booths um, we just filled up. Um, we're excited about that. And that's kind of where we want to be. A hundred is our number. So we're excited about that. Our, our auction shaping up, I mean, better than we had hoped for. So yeah, that's going to be good. Um, oh gosh, Dylan, we forgot to ask him on the raffle. Oh yeah. Okay. So, so here's our raffle and uh, we're drawing this in just a couple weeks. It's Saturday night. The, the 15th, April 15th at convention. So if you have your choice of these four options, option number one is Yukon moose. Option number two, mountain goat brown bear combo. Option number three is lion, Cape Buffalo, sable, crocodile, and a lioness. And option number four is a doll sheep, brown bear, caribou, black bear combo. If you win that raffle and you have to choose one, which one are you picking? Mountain goat and brown bear. Really? Okay. Not even a question. That was I, quick. I, already, I looked at you. I, I looked at it already. I saw those. I'm like, hmm, I wonder which one I would like to go on. That's right. So Mountain it's kind of a, is a big one for me. I think, and especially with my bow, I think that'd be really cool. That's great. Yeah, I was with Peter Barella. He's that'd be hard he to do in fuzzy slippers, though. I'm just saying. Hey, they're comfortable. Know. I'd be yeah. willing to bet that I wasn't going to get cold. <laughs> hey, you know, you can do it with your slipper. Just make sure they match your goat hat, like Frank Noska wears. Yeah. Have you seen the guys wearing the white hats, the goat hats? I don't think so. Have you, Dylan? Have you seen that? Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. So. Yeah, it was. Evidently, in, it I need was to get out more often. It's like a decoy hat. It just looks like a yeah. A, oh, a Billy head. Yeah. Oh, so, so they're wearing it as a decoy. Yeah. Yeah, we <laughs> we have some video of Warren doing that with antelope, actually. <laughs> really? Yeah, he put, yeah, the shirt on and everything, and then a, a, a antelope hat on, basically. Yeah. See, there's. I don't know if that would work for me. That antelope would be like, holy crap, that's a. That's a 270 pound antelope. I'm out of here. I don't see I a picture. Seen. I don't see a picture of Frank with a uh, goat hat on, but here's Frank with a deer. He always wears them. Yeah, I'm. I'm pretty sure. Oh, he, yeah, oh, there. No, no he's, he's just got a regular hat. hat. I'm pretty but sure I think he, he always has. wears them. Well, I'm telling you right now, Warren wore it. I didn't ever said that it worked. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's just good video. That's about it. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, hey, I appreciate you jumping on with us today. And uh, we'll uh, look forward to seeing you here in Reno in just a little bit. Yeah, I'm super excited, guys. It should be a good time. All right. Thanks, Easton. Take care, man. Have a good one.